Hi everyone, i um, recording a lecture for the Ballistic Pendulum Lab. Uh, this lab is starting <clears throat> the week after spring break, so on Wednesday the 15th and Thursday the 16th. And then it's going to be a two-week lab uh, due um, the 29th through 30th, Wednesday and Thursday respectively. So the name of this lab is Ballistic Pendulum Lab. And uh, really the situation is such that we have uh, like a little cannon that can be fired. It's like a spring loaded cannon. So um, right here I have a picture of um, here, the spring. Um, right now the spring is at its equilibrium position because the little cannonball is in its launch position as kind of indicated here. Um, here's the center of mass and what we call kind of the velocity as it's leaving the mouth of the cannon is the muzzle velocity. So here is a picture of what it looks like when the cannonball has compressed the spring and it's about to launch. The spring pushes it through this distance here, oops, to this launch position where there's initial velocity, V muzzle, as it leaves. And what we're trying to calculate is V muzzle, and we're trying to calculate it using two different theories, two different ways. So what we're gonna be getting is an equation for kinematics that describes V muzzle, and an equation for conservation laws. Now this includes both conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. And that's the part, the ballistic pendulum part, that's the part that's associated with the conservation laws. So if you haven't seen the ballistic pendulum problem worked before, um, you'll be deriving that equation. Um, it's a pretty standard problem you can find in just about any textbook if you need help deriving it. But um, <clears throat> let me first write down the two equations that you're going to be deriving. So from kinematics, you're going to be deriving for, and I'll start calling it V sub M for V muzzle, will be equal to delta X total times the square root of G all divided by the square root of 2 times delta y total. So that will be your first equation. Your second equation, um, coming from the conservation laws, you'll be calculating v muzzle, and you'll find it to be the mass of what we call the bullet. And here, um, the, it probably takes a little bit of explanation, but here that mass is going to be, the mass of the bullet would be our little cannonball. Mass of the bullet, the mass of the pendulum, so um, I will be describing what the pendulum is later on when we talk about the ballistic pendulum portion, all divided by the mass of the bullet times the square root of 2gh. h is a height that the pendulum travels through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight our measured quantities. Um, let's choose a highlighter color here. So our measured quantities are going to be delta y total and delta x total for the kinematics version. And we're going to be measuring h, mass of the pendulum, and mass of the bullet or the cannon for the conservation's law one. So part of what you're going to be deriving is these two equations that we're going to be using. So this next page has a picture of the apparatus and this is straight out of your dot doc file for the ballistic pendulum lab. And so um, you'll notice that this is a very specialized apparatus in the sense that it actually does multiple things but right here 
This is the kind of spring loaded cannon. And this is the launch position of the ball. Now, you may or may not be able to say it. It says pin to hold ball in place. Well, there's, there's actually this rod right here. Um, that the ball, so the cannonball actually has a hole right through its center that can fit on this rod right here. So that's how it's forced to be kind of, when it's back here and the spring is compressed, it will be moving only along the horizontal as the spring pushes it forward until it gets to this position. You can see that uh, right here at the middle of the ball is where the rod that the cannonball is threaded onto ends right there. And that is the launch position. And in fact, it's actually pointing to exactly where the center of mass is of the ball. So the end of that rod is the center of mass of the ball. And this is the portion that is the kind of cannonball portion that's being launched. So for the kinematics part, um, what you're gonna do is take this pendulum. This pendulum is for the conservation of energy portion and you're gonna push it out of the way. Um, it can stay up here because there's these little teeth up here that will hold it in place and you can completely move it out of the way. And at that time, what you'll have is just a clear area for the ball to shoot out for, um, you know, through this apparatus. So it'll just be able to shoot right through here once that pendulum base is out of the way. Um, in addition to that, the pendulum base is on a desktop so right flush with the pendulum base, um, this is a desk right here, and here is the ground. So shooting with V muzzle from this position, um, for kinematics, all we had to measure, if you remember, is delta X total and delta Y total. Those were our two measured quantities. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be shooting the ball out from this position. It will clear the apparatus and end up on the ground over here. So maybe it's launch, it ends up hitting right here. And so what we want to measure to get delta x total is the distance from here on the ground to the edge of the desk plus the distance from the edge of the desk to the center of mass of the ball here as it's launching. Um, in the laboratory, they call this position right here delta x naught, and they call this position delta x. And so delta x total of the ball during its flight will just be delta x plus delta x naught. So you're going to be measuring delta x naught once because it's actually not changing at all. And you're going to be shooting the cannonball three times. So um, maybe you shoot it three times and you have three slightly different values. So maybe you have one here, one here, one here. So you're actually going to be measuring delta x three times because you're going to have three different values. <clears throat> And then um, you'll be getting delta x total three times. So you'll have delta x total equals delta x plus delta x naught. So this one will remain the same. And you'll change this has three values. So that will give you three values here. And in that way, you'll get three values of delta x total, which you'll then average and calculate the standard deviation of the mean or the uncertainty of, and be reporting that and showing those calculations in the lab. So Tyler would have measured from kind of the edge here to the edge. And then we have this little um, pendulum bob that hangs down from the base. It's a, it's, a, it's a mass on a string and it points to the location right here on the floor where you'd be measuring from, from here uh, to these three different values. Uh, how do you see where these these three values are on the ground? Because, you know, it shoots pretty fast. 
Um, and, and what we do is we, we actually tape down a piece of uh, white paper here. And we cover, we, we actually tape it and then we tape it down to the ground, you know, in the approximate location where the ball is gonna hit. And we take this stuff called carbon paper. So carbon paper has uh, on one side, the underneath side has a fine dust of carbon. So if you place it on top of a piece of white paper, and then let's say you strike it from above with a cannonball, um, it's gonna leave a little black mark. So actually these little X's aren't accurate. It leaves a little black dot where the cannonball hits. And the center of that is the center of mass of the, of the cannonball itself. So you'll actually have three black dots on this white paper indicating where your delta X's are. So uh, we're actually, that's our delta X total. And uh, for the kinematics, all we have left to find is the delta Y total. And so you'll be measuring delta Y total um, from the center of mass to center of mass. So let me erase some of this so I can see what's happening here. <laughs> So let's say that this is one of your locations here on the ground, and um, the way that it was actually marked by the cannonball is it was actually just the tip of that cannonball hitting the carbon paper, then hitting the white paper to make that little black dot. Um, so in a way, uh, from the ground to, from the ground, because we want delta y total now is what I'm thinking about, from the ground to, to here, is from the bottom of the ball to the bottom of the ball. That would give me delta y total. And that's the same as measuring from the center of mass to the center of mass right here, because all I'm doing is shifting down the radius and the radius. So in fact, center of mass to center of mass calculation, which would give me delta y total, which normally would be from here to here, right? That's what I want to measure, is the same as measuring from the bottom of the ball to the bottom of the ball. This is also delta y total. You see what I'm talking about here? So delta y total, I can measure directly from the ground. Um, well, actually, it's going to have to be comprised of two measurements. One from the pendulum base to the ground and the other from the bottom of the ball to the pendulum base. So let me erase this so we can have a better look. So my delta y total is gonna consist of a measurement from the ground, call it delta y, to the top of the pendulum base. And then, even though it's hard to see here, from the bottom of the ball to the pendulum base. And the addition of both of these will be my delta y total. Now, these you're only gonna measure once because they're not changing and there's nothing to average out there once each. And then once you have these values, um, again, you'll have your delta x total average plus its standard deviation uh, you'll have your delta y total. You can plug them into your equation that you derived. Let's go back to it right here and here to find the muzzle velocity for part one. That's not the whole thing um, because uh, once you find v muzzle from the kinematics case, so again, the kinematics case is part one, it's also going to ask you to propagate the error in the V-muzzle um, equation. So again, V-muzzle is delta x total square root of g times 2 delta y total. And um, that's great because uh, for delta x total, you have delta x total average, and you also have the uncertainty in delta x total. 
Um, you got that by calculating the standard deviation of the three values. Delta Y total, um, you don't have the uncertainty for delta Y total. Uh, delta Y total was actually made up of two different measurements. So when it comes time to propagate the error, you have two choices, really. You can input delta Y total is the sum of these two measurements into this equation. This might be the easiest way. So you'd have delta x total square root of g square root of 2 times delta y plus delta y naught. And that would leave you with three values to propagate. So you would have three values in your propagation of error. Because uh, for the single measurement, of course, you would have the uncertainty in delta y naught depending on your instrument, the uncertainty in delta y depending on the uncertainty, and of course, this one you get from the standard deviation, you would have the uncertainty. So you'd have three terms in that propagation of error. Or your second choice would be to propagate the error in this equation to get the uncertainty in delta y total. And then once you had that, you could then go over here and you would have just two terms in your next propagation of error equation where you propagate error to get the uncertainty in the speed, the muzzle velocity. Um, they're both approximately the same amount of work, but you do have two choices. So in the laboratory, um, I'll make sure that Tyler has indicated to you which instrument he used to measure these two things. Was it the vernier caliper? Was it a meter stick? Uh, and what was the precision of those instruments? So once you get your V plus or minus V, you'll just be reporting it. Um, and then you'll be finding your muzzle velocity from the second form using conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. And you're going to be comparing those two in a percent difference. So that's pretty much part one. And part two, like I said, comes from the conservation, conservation laws portion. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to this picture right here. I'm going to clean it up and copy it. And let's focus on part two here. So Using the conservation laws, we, we had an equation that said V muzzle is equal to um, mass of the bullet plus mass of the pendulum divided by mass of the bullet all times the square root of 2GH. Now, to derive this equation, I, like I said, you're going to use conservation of momentum and conservation of energy. But the way that this works is um, typically people talk about the ballistic pendulum as a way to measure oops, <laughs> uh, the bullet speed of a the bullet speed as it leaves a gun so let's say we have a bullet and for us that's what we would call kind of here it is just leaving the mouth of the gun so here's my v muzzle and in the ballistic pendulum what you have is this block of wood um, attached to a massless string and it's just sitting there. And what happens is the bullet collides with the wood. And let me draw down here what the next picture looks like. Here's the bullet inside the wood. And now the whole thing moves to the left with some speed V. And it swings up. And uh, at some time later, this is the original line, you can see the bullet in the wood have moved um, up this height h from its original location, maybe down here. And so h is actually a measurement of how far up the wood bullet system has moved up. And that's what gets input into here. The mass of the bullet is just the mass of the bullet. Here it's a cannonball. And the mass of the pendulum is supposed to be the mass of the wood, but here we actually literally have this baskety pendulum thing here. And instead of shooting our gun into wood, we're shooting a, a spring-loaded ball <laughs> into a pendulum, so no guns. 
in this lab. And what happens is the, the ball will become embedded in this little pendulum basket, and here it is after it's swung up some distance of H. And so let me explain to you, um, from, from here to here, we use conservation of energy in order to describe the motion, but the collision, which is, um, this is kind of the before case of the collision, and this is the after case of the collision. So for collisions, we use conservation of momentum. Okay, so from, from here to here, this is conservation of momentum, and then from here to here, we use conservation of energy after the collision has happened to describe the motion, and we get this equation. So you can see how this kind of standard problem of the ballistic pendulum, which you can really look up in just about any textbook, um, is described by this apparatus where I have a cannonball, a basket which, which takes place of the wood, they become embedded and move up some height h. So all I have to do is measure the mass of the bullet, which I literally take this thing and I'll put it on the electronic scale. I'll need the mass of the pendulum. So all I have to do is I can actually unbolt this thing from the apparatus, take it and put it on the scale and measure its mass. So now I have mass of bullet and pendulum. All I need is the height h. So the height h well, will be, as mentioned, from this location to this location here. But that's really talking about the center of mass of the system to the center of mass of the combined system. So what we've done is we've actually marked on the pendulum. You can see it says red dot for measuring h. This is actually the location right here, the center of mass. And once it's swung up, the location of the center of mass is here. So we're actually measuring from the center of mass of the bullet, wood, or in this case, pendulum cannonball location to the center of mass of that combined mass system again. So to get that measurement of H, uh, what we're going to be doing is relative to the pendulum base, I'll be measuring kind of H naught is what it's called. Let me just double check if that's what it's called in your lab manual. Yeah, it calls it initial height to final height after the pendulum has come up and come to rest up here. So from H final and H naught, I should be able to get a, a quantity of H up to some correctional values, which I'm going to describe in a second. Now you might be wondering, how does this pendulum stay here, you know, in this kind of fixed position? And I'm going to explain to you, there's actually these little teeth right here. So let me draw those better on the next page. So you actually have these kind of teeth that look like this. And uh, the pendulum basket itself, as it moves up, it has this kind of like locking mechanism underneath it. It has uh, a little arm that's kind of got a little hooky on it that's free to pivot right here around this this point. So it actually can rotate around this point like that. As it makes its way up, it, it will push out of the way. It'll push this little arm back in this direction. And so it can slide up no problem. But once it passes one of these marks, it, it'll kind of push back out again. And it will try to, it'll hook into one of these little teeth area. So as it slides up, it's free to slide up, but once it stops going up, it's going to fall back and kind of land in one of these teeth. So what we're going to be asking you to do is to measure two things specific to these little teeth, these little plastic teeth. One of them is the vertical spacing between the teeth, which would be from the top of the tooth to the top of the tooth. So this is V sub S, or VS for vertical spacing. And then we're also going to be asking you to measure the vertical drop. So that would be from this pivot down here to the top of a two, so of the vertical drop. Actually, in my picture, the vertical drop looks bit better than the vertical spacing. It's actually opposite. And you'll see on the video of the apparatus that that's the case too. And you're asked to use this vertical spacing and vertical drop along with, and let me scroll back a page, along with your initial 
H naught and HF to find H. So you're supposed to use H naught, HF, the vertical spacing and the vertical drop. And this is supposed to help you find H plus or minus the uncertainty in H. So uh, typically, okay, typically without these correctional values of vertical spacing and vertical drop, normally H, it would just be H final minus H naught. But what the vertical spacing and drop are doing is they're allowing you to kind of correct this value and find the uncertainty in H. So very similar to what you guys did when you did the centripetal lab, you're going to be trying to estimate the size of the uncertainty in H based on these measurements right here. I'm not going to tell you exactly how it works. Um, you're going to be correcting H from this value and finding the uncertainty with vertical spacing and vertical drop. So you're going to try to come up and understand how that works. And the argument is, is that the plus or minus the uncertainty in H that you find, this will be kind of larger than the uncertainty from the measuring devices, which is a ruler that we used. So in order to measure this, you would typically be looking using the vernier calipers. These are very small distances for the vertical spacing and the vertical drop. You normally use the calipers to measure them. Um, of course, Tyler will be doing those for you now. And um, that's all of our measurements. So at this point, we're able to find the bullet mass, the pendulum mass, and the H. And once you have those, um, you'll go ahead and plug them into the equation for V muzzle from the conservation laws. So again, you'll be plugging these into here. Plug in, plug in, plug in. And you'll get your value of V muzzle. And it's at this time, you're also going to be asked to propagate the error one more time um, from this equation. So you'll have your uncertainty in H that you've just found over here by estimation methods. The uncertainty in the mass of the pendulum, well, that comes from the electronic scale. And the same with the uncertainty in the bullet, right? So those are both the 0.01 grams from the electronic scale. But propagate the error and determine the uncertainty in V-muzzle. So at that point, you'll have your V-muzzle from kinematics and plus or minus the uncertainty in V-muzzle, and your V-muzzle from conservation laws. They come from two different theories, so we compare them with a percent difference. So you're asked to do that. And then you're asked after that to write a conclusion. In the conclusion, it says, does the uncertainty for both results account for the percent difference here. Specifically address why one value of the muzzle speed is larger than the other. So one of these is going to be larger than one of them. So I want you to think about the errors in the lab and think, does it make sense why one is larger than the other? If it doesn't make sense, it's fine. Say, this doesn't make sense with things that I know. And uh, try to be quantitative and to analyze that. And that's a lab. Nothing to it. <laughs> All right. So uh, there's a little video posted for you guys for in the lab. So you can guys take a look at that um, to see the apparatus and what it looks like. And of course, I'll be providing the dot .doc file with all of the data and information in it. All right, thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye.